G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to the Apex Predators dev server. I don't really do dev server content very often, but this time we're going to have a look at a lot of things, because there are quite a few things that are coming to the game in the next patch. And of course, there have been some fairly radical changes to the the current dev server, or the previous dev servers, resulting in a couple of things that are worth talking about. Of course, first we're going to discuss the premiums. We're going to discuss whether or not some of them might be worth it, whether there are any issues with them. We're going to have a discussion about the meta, and then of course we are going to have a discussion about the juicy vehicles themselves, and of course some of the weird changes that have happened that might actually put the game in a bit of a better spot. But before we get into that, I'd just like to shout out my uh, affiliate link decal in the description below, 3% off everything on the store. If you do want to buy a pre-order, you, you, you can use my link for a 3% discount. Although I do not recommend ordering pre-orders, uh, if you insist, then my decal is there for you to use. So without further ado, let's get on with the premiums. The first one is of course the A6E TRAM, and this is a ground attack oriented aircraft. This is not a plane that you are going to expect to do extremely well in, but at the same time it also is. It has four M9Ls, it's at 10.0, and it performs somewhat like a fat A4. That's kind of what I would relate it to, to be honest. Uh, whilst it's in a very strange position, dogfighting, it's extremely strong with AIM-9Ls. If you give any plane AIM-9Ls and throw it at 10.0, it is very likely going to do very well. So this plane, I think, is going to be w ridiculously strong. It's going to be a little bit too much. And of course, you have uh, GBU-16s for ground RB and uh, GBU-2s. You've also got an absolute metric butt-ton of bombs. Uh, you've got pretty much everything you could want to throw at the ground and everything you could want to throw at the air. The A6E is going to be a little bit of a sort of hot topic, and I honestly think it is just going to replace the A10A as the most powerful and absurd premium in the game. Uh, I, I, I'm really worried about this plane, to be honest. It should be a lot higher. Um, and of course, this is probably going to be the plane that gets spammed and has a lot of people abusing it. So, moving on to something a little less egregious, we have the MiG-21 Lazur M, and it seems to be a copy-paste of the MiG-21 BIS SAU. It's just got six R60 MKs, uh, and pretty much the same standard loadouts, and pretty much the same stats as the regular MiG-21 BIS in the other trees. Uh, so there's not really much to talk about here. Off to the USSR, and we have the MiG-23 ML, which is essentially a slightly cut down MiG-23 MLD. You do, of course, get the absolutely manic loadout that you do. You get the R-24s, you get the R-60Ms, uh, and that will sort of help with the grind a little bit. I think 11.3 premiums, I, like, I do have a problem with them because you are essentially buying your way into the top echelons of the battle, and Gaijin originally said that they wouldn't do that, and they've uh, clearly broken a promise there, and I do have an issue with that. Uh, I also have an issue with people brand new to the game jumping into top tier, which is quite literally the deepest end that you can be thrown into, and not being able to fly let alone fight, let alone use radar, flares, etc. So you're just going to end up with a whole team full of premiums that ends up dying really, really quickly, and it just sullies the game. And I really do have an issue with these particular premiums. Uh, I, I just wish they had chosen some premiums that were a little bit lower in battle rating. Something around the 10.0 the mark would have been acceptable, I think. So for the Brits, we're going to go on, and we have the F4J, which is, I believe, basically an F4J... Uh, but with uh, a couple of British twists. It's got the same AIM-9Gs and Sky Flashes, and it's also got the 20mm Vulcan extra gun. It is more or less equivalent to the FGR2 and the FG1. Um, it's 11.3. It sucks that it's 11.3, uh, but honestly, I just I wish it wasn't added, but it's, it's going to be basically the same as the Phantoms. So I really, I don't know. I, I feel pretty negatively about it, but I guess it is what it is. Um, I'd also just like to quickly mention the Sea Harrier FRS-1, which is coming as a pre as a squadron vehicle. Uh, this one has two AIM-9Ls and comes with uh, a small amount of countermeasures, not a, not a particularly huge, 60 countermeasures. Uh, so 10.7, you know what, I think this is a good spot for AIM-9Ls. I think this is on the line of acceptable. So, moving on, we have Japan, who gets nothing, as usual. 
China gets something actually interesting. They get the J7D. Now this plane is essentially, well, at least it appears to be a MiG-21 BIS, but of course the Chinese have their own missiles. So they have the PL-7, which is equivalent to the Matra Magic 1. And of course you get the four PL-5Bs if you so desire. I think personally I will go with the PL-7s. This plane is probably the only interesting one out of the lot of them. It sits at 11.0, which is sort of sort of appropriate for a MiG-21 BIS that doesn't have all aspect missiles. So yeah, it's okay. The only issue I have with it, however, is that there is no equivalent in the tech tree. You might say the J7E is an equivalent, but it only has PL-5Bs, and PL-5Bs are not quite Matra Magics. They don't really have the flare resistance, and of course they don't really have the same pull as the uh, as the Matra Magics. So I genuinely think that the J7D is a straight upgrade over the J7E, uh, and I really wish that we had some form of equivalent jet at this tier. It quite reminds me of the A5C and its compatriots. It really is just a cut above the rest. Moving on to the dead on arrival Italian tech tree, we have the F104S TAF. This is essentially a copy paste version of the F104S, not the SASA, which is uh, actually like half capable. The F104S is stuck with nine Ps, although you do get six, and of course you do get a Vulcan, but you don't really get anything else. You've got 60, 60 countermeasures, but I genuinely don't think 60 countermeasures are going to get you very far. The uh, F104S is a definite struggle bus, um, and I have just noticed that the F104S in the Italian tech tree does not get any countermeasures. So it is, whilst it is a straight upgrade, it is uh, not really particularly pleasant to fly. So it's going to be pretty tough to sell the F104S TS TAF. Uh, I will say that I suspect there will be an F-16 coming to the Italian tech tree, and if there is, it might make it a little bit more juicier, but honestly, I don't think I would bother with the F-104S TAF at all. Uh, France, as of now, currently gets absolutely nothing, no rank 8s, and no rank 7 premium, but I do suspect that there might be a further Mirage edition coming to the game, uh, and I would assume that that might have more powerful air-to-air -air missiles and a maybe a more powerful engine and radar at the very most. Now, Sweden is actually fairly interesting. We don't have a premium yet, but I am going to assume that there's the J35F, which is a slightly up engine J35, and also was known, at least in real life, to carry uh, some form of AIM-7, or at least some form of upgraded semi-active radar homing missile. This is gonna be quite interesting. Uh, this might add a little curveball if it is Anything other than 11.0, it is a literal pay-to-win straight upgrade over the J35D, particularly if it has countermeasures. And we are seeing this as a bit of a theme throughout this whole throughout this whole patch. Now, the one thing that is uh, or our last premium before we get into the super interesting stuff is the Kfir Canard. It appears to be a Kfir C7 or a Kfir C2 uh, with a slight change. It looks pretty boring. It's got no radar. It's got Oh, a radar rangefinder rather. It's It's got no sort of search and track radar. It's got no semi-active radar homing missiles. It's got uh, some countermeasures, but there's not really a lot to talk about. And I don't really see the Kfir as a competitive plane at all. However, this one is 10.3. So you may just end up escaping the, uh, the clutches here of those higher tiers. Wait, it says 10 point. It says 10.3 when you look at it on the stat card. Would you look at that? But it does say 11.0 in the tech tree. So I don't know what's going on. I would assume that that is a, uh, a dev server bug, uh, but it could be 11.0 and it better be bloody good for 11.0. But if it's 10.3, you know what? It might just be worth it. Uh, I would definitely wait until the patch. I would definitely not pre-order this uh, just in case it does actually go to 11.0. So with that out of the way, Let's actually get into the new rank eight planes. So we have several F-16s and I wanna go through the F-16s first because I think these planes are particularly interesting. They have insane acceleration. They have a decent amount of flares. And of course they have a fairly good array of flight characteristics. The only thing that is really lacking here is the uh, sort of 
semi-active radar homing missiles and uh, we'll get to that later but one of them actually does have them it was recently added to the uh, to the dev server uh, but also we have drop tanks now so the drop tanks we have a 300 gallon drop tank that's about seven and a bit minutes of fuel on the f-16 uh, very very useful and of course when you let them go uh, you'll have that maneuverability and of course you'll have that longevity these rank 8 jets tend to absolutely suck fuel i have no idea why but at sea level you are absolutely guzzling fuel and drop tanks are actually going to be very very useful so it's good to see them added to the game it's a cool mechanic and i think that it is going to bring us into a uh, very interesting era of war thunder now the american f-16a only comes with aim 9 l's at the moment you do start stock with aim 9 j's and that's fine uh, I kind of would have liked to see an earlier version instead with just 9Js and throwing it at 11.3 and that would kind of be like a straight upgrade over the F5 in my opinion or at least in the in the functional sense where you would have a plane that is extremely dogfight oriented um, and has really really good flight performance but is limited in the missile capability and I think what the, this is what the F16 is going for in general as a sort of overarching theme. I think the F-16 is a fairly excellent dogfighting plane, uh, however it is very much lacking in the avionics sector, or at least uh, in, in the sort of uh, mechanics, in the game mechanics sector. There are no active or semi-active radar homing missiles, you're just stuck with 9Ls, and whilst you are so-called stuck with 9Ls, uh, they are excellent missiles and they should not be taken for granted. So you've got six of them, I think that should be plenty along with the dogfighting capability. It'll be very interesting to see it come to the game. For our friends in Germany, you guys get bugger all. In the USSR, we are getting the famed MiG-29. Now, recently the MiG-29 was seen on the dev server with R-73s. Uh, these have since been removed and you are stuck with R-60Ms and R-27s. Uh, the R-27 is an insane missile. It is uh, 35, uh, 35G, no, 30G missile uh, and can come in the radar or active radar homing, or semi-active radar homing rather, or IR guided versions. The uh, the IR guided version has an all aspect lock range of six kilometers uh, and has some uh, electronic uh, countermeasures. So it'll be a little bit more resistant to flares. You also have on the MiG-29 a very high top speed. This thing can top out at like 1500 kilometers per hour at sea level. And of course you are uh, given basically the head mounted display which allows you to lock targets that are not directly in front of your nose uh, this is a really really strong advantage for the mig-29 however limited to r60ms and r27s uh, i think this plane is going to be fairly well balanced against the uh, f-16 i don't see it as a dogfighter i see it as the missile bus of the patch uh, but it also doesn't have any serious, like, it doesn't have four semi-active radar homing missiles. It's only got the two, so you are going to be limited in the BBR sector. So I think this patch is going to be very much down to dogfighting, which is going to pro prove to be very interesting, and it should prove to be decently enjoyable. Moving on to Great Britain, we have the Tornado GR1, and it is a ground attacker. It's thrown at 11.3, and you only get two A9Ls as your air-to-air -air armament. You do get a shit ton of bombs, but honestly, on the ch on this channel, we don't really care about bombs and rockets. We really care about the air-to-air -air capabilities. And whilst the ground attack capabilities are great, it'll be great in ground attack uh, as a cast plane. I see the Tornado GR1 as being nothing more than uh, cannon fodder, to be honest. It's not particularly good at turning. Its guns are okay. It's not particularly well performing. It doesn't accelerate particularly well. I think it's going to get outdone by everything. And this is further proof that Britain suffers. Now, moving on to Japan. Whilst they don't get any new vehicles, the F4 EJ Kai gets AIM-9Ls, which allows it to fairly decently compete with the enemies at this tier. You get the AIM-9Ps and the AIM-9Ls. Uh, you can carry, of course, the AIM-7Es and AIM-7Fs. Uh, this allows you to really have a very wide scope of engagement uh, capabilities. So I think the F4 EJ Kai is going to make a bit of a comeback here because the F-14 has pushed it out this patch. However, with the advent of dogfighting jets, the F-4EJ might just be able to sneak in and do a little bit more damage. It is still at 11.3, uh, and I think that's somewhat justified. Although we do see a little bit of extra power creep there that I'm not too keen on, it is going to be interesting to see how this plane plays out. Now, this is probably the single or the second most interesting addition to the game and this is the F-16A MLU. This is a Taiwanese Air Force aircraft and carries 
the AIM-7F. It is the only plane or the only F-16 that currently fields the AIM-7F in War Thunder. So you can equip four 9Ls, two 7Fs, and you still get all the bells and whistles of the other F-16s. You get the drop tanks, you get the uh, AGM-65s, you get the excellent performance. So this plane is going to be a bit of a demon, and I actually think that this is a really, really interesting plane. China is getting a lot of great stuff this patch. Honestly, it is in enormous how, uh, how much China is getting treated. And honestly, it's kind of deserved because every now and then the minor nations do also need some love. So you can go bing chilling to your heart's content. Moving on to Italy. Italy does not get any other changes. I'm going to assume that there is another F-16A on the way that is still going under uh, undergoing development. But for now, we are stuck with the F-104S ASA at 11.3. I've made a video on this very recently. I do enjoy playing the plane, but it is stressful at the moment, and it is going to be even more stressful when the matches start rolling in. Now, France does not get anything new at this time. I do, like I said earlier, assume that there is going to be a Mirage 2000 with some additional weapons uh, or avionics, but... I have no proof of that, it's just pure speculation, uh, and that is pretty much all there is to it. Now, the most interesting change here, or the most interesting addition here, is the JA-37D. This is an iteration of the Vigan that is able to carry AIM-120 AMRAMs. This is the only reason why it was upgraded, or the JA-37 was upgraded from the C-Spec to the D-Spec, according to my uh, 30 seconds of research here. It appears that the avionics and software are upgraded. The RB-99, which is the AM-120 AMRAM, uh, was uh, sort of allowed or ab able to be carried by the JA-37D. Uh, the JA-37C does not have this capability. So this is pretty much the only thing that makes the JA-37D different to the JA-37C. Is this plane going to get AIM-120s? And this would be the first plane with some serious active radar homing capabilities. The AIM-120s are extremely powerful, they have an extremely long range, and they are extremely deadly. So I am kind of nervous, to be honest, about this plane and how it's going to go. Uh, and the fact that it still will face 10.7s is even more scary. So in the J35D, you can be flying alongside planes that are slinging AMRAMs. Very scary indeed. Uh, especially scary if you're flying an F-104S without the countermeasures. Well, you are pretty much boned. So... Israel is the last nation here, and we get the F-16A Nets. The F-16A is pretty much the same as the one in the American Tech Tree. You still get the drop tanks, you still get the 9Ls, you still get the 9Ps. It's pretty much stock standard, same old, same old. And you know what? I'm happy to have a copy-paste plane like this, because it doesn't really do any damage, and it's definitely better than the Kefir C7. So that's pretty much all there is to the new additions. However, what effect are these going to have on the meta? Like I hinted early, I think that this meta is going to become more of a dogfighting meta. I think that the F-16 and the MiG-29 are going to be the top dogs. It's going to be a very close race between the MiG-29 uh, the, the MiG and the F-16. I think the F-16 is absolutely going to thrash in the dogfighting capabilities, but of course the dogfighting capabilities are not what win top tier jets, it is the BBR capability, the ability to thin out the numbers early on in the match, and the best plane that is going to probably do that might actually be the JA-37D, provided that it gets AIM-120s. Of course, the US, uh, the uh, Chinese get that lovely F-16A uh, MLU, and uh, that is going to definitely throw a spanner in the works, but I think the main plane that needs to be looked at here is the F-14, and the F-14 is still the plane with the best BVR capabilities at the moment. As we speak, it is the only plane with active radar homing missiles, and is the only plane that is capable of uh, everything, let's say. It is, at the moment, the fastest plane, it is the best turning, and it has the best variety of, of, uh, of weapon systems. The F-16s don't have that. Even the MLU is not quite as flexible as the F-14. It hasn't got the ability to uh, sort of spread its wings, and whilst it is going to be very, very capable, I think that the uh, F-14 is just going to have a little edge over its uh, F-16 counterparts. 
The F-14, of course, does carry the M54, and that is a big step above uh, the likes of the MLU, which is probably going to be the most competitive F-16. So how are these guys going to stack up against the MiG-29? The MiG-29 does have the head-mounted display, and I think the head-mounted display means a lot for this plane. I think it is potentially the saving grace alongside the R-27s. And I think that whilst the R-27s are extremely powerful, there are only two of them on the plane, and so you don't have as much uh, in the way of options as your F-14 counterparts. The F-14 is probably going to be flat out better. It seems to be a little bit more varied in its abilities. It seems to have more capabilities overall. And of course, it's got more missiles, which means that it can deal more damage. I still think that these planes are going to be extremely close in performance. I don't think that these are going to have a huge delta where you're going to have uh, a runaway plane like we do currently with the F-14. But I think this is certainly going to throw a spanner in the works and it is definitely going to disrupt the reign of the F-14, giving it something to actually fight in an actually equal circumstance. Uh, provided that the JA-37D does not get AIM-120s at the moment, I think this is going to be a very, very interesting patch, and I'm going to keep a close eye on the meta, see how we go, and hopefully we can actually have some fun, because over the last few months, the F-14 has reigned supreme, and apart from being able to stand up to it with the Mirage 2000, I haven't really found any other way to properly counter it. You just tend to be food for it, and so having the ability to properly counter it is going to be a massive improvement to the game quality, and of course, we are going to have a lot more fun enjoying to uh, sort of stand up to that F-14 bully, if you will. So, overall, we have plenty of copy and paste. We have plenty of premiums. We have a ridiculous number of premiums coming this patch. Uh, I think it's over 50% of the new vehicles are, in fact, premiums. Uh, it's slightly disappointing, but you know what? I think that if as long as Gaijin uh, sort of pulls their finger out and uh, maybe gives us some, some more rank 8 jets, maybe some better rank 7 jets, I think we're going to be fine. I think it's going to be an interesting patch. And of course, uh, don't spend beyond your means, especially with these tough economic times. Uh, definitely do not just go out and buy all of the premiums. Um, although, if you do, the decal link would help me out greatly. Um, but that being said, I think you guys are going to get very, very excited for this. Uh, just sort of hold your breath. Don't get overly excited. But uh, definitely, this is a pretty big patch. And we are going to see some very interesting shifts in the meta over the next coming days. Well, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for supporting the channel, which you can do via the links in the description below. Take care, and I'll catch you on the live server. <laughs> I like to change things up every now and then. <laughs>